Welcome to the Ionian origins of Greek philosophy. This presentation shows the geographical origins of the first Greek philosophers. The geographical background in which this achievement of the human mind took place covers a good part of the Eastern Mediterranean. Before the Macedonian and Roman rule, the Greek people lived in independent city-states called poleis. In their contact with other peoples, the Greek shared the feeling of a common language, culture and lineage. Usually, they felt closer ties with the cities that spoke the same dialect, the linguistic reflex of a common history and traditions. The birth of science and philosophy in Greece is fundamentally an Ionian phenomenon. Of much more limited importance is the influence of the Dorians, the Aeolians, and the Achaeans. Although Athens was one of the Ionian cities, its role in the growth of philosophy is of relatively late date. The birth of Greek philosophy is conventionally situated in the beginning of the activity of Thales, from the Ionian city of Miletus. He is the creator of the Milesian school of philosophy, which takes its name from this city. He concerned himself mainly with mathematics, physics and cosmology. Anaximander of Miletus was a disciple of Thales. Unlike his teacher, Anaximander wrote down in prose some of his teachings. One single fragment of his works on physics and cosmology has survived. Anaximenes of Miletus is the third and the last of the great Milesian philosophers. He too was a cosmologist and proposed air as the first element from which all things are created. Pythagoras is a semi-legendary figure whose very existence has been cast in doubt. He is generally believed to have been born in the Ionian city of Samos around the 2nd or 3rd decade of the 6th century before Christ. He was believed to have traveled through Egypt before heading for Magna Graecia. About the year 530 BC, he tried to settle down in the Achaean colony of Croton, where he was the head of a religious and philosophical sect. After being expulsed from Croton, Pythagoras, possibly accompanied by members of his sect, traveled to Metapontum, where he died. Croton, together with Sibiris, are Achaean colonies founded in the second half of the 8th century before Christ. Metapontum, in turn, was founded by colonists from both cities some years later. Xenophanes left his natal town of Colophon when he was still a young man, and spent six decades of his life traveling around most of Greece. According to Diogenes Laertes, Xenophanes lived in Sanko and Catania. It is probable that he lived in Ilea too, since its inhabitants consulted him on religious matters. Around 770, colonists from Celsus and Eritrea founded an emporium in the small island of Pisicusae, modern Ischia, off the Gulf of Naples. Some years later, around 750, the colonists from Pithicusae set foot in the continent and founded the colony of Cumae. They lived from commerce and piracy. Between 750 and 730, the pirates from Chalcis founded the colony of Zanko. Heraclitus was a member of the aristocracy of his hometown, Ephesus. A number of fragments of a single work in prose written by him dealing with theology, epistemology and the universe have been transmitted to us by several later authors. Parmenides, one of the most important philosophers working before the time of Socrates, was also part of his hometown's aristocracy. Fragments of his work on verse about the world, the being and the possibility of knowledge have been transmitted in a fragmentary fashion. The city of Ilea gives its name to the Iliadic school of philosophy. It was there that dialectic and ontology were born, and the important principles of metaphysics were discussed for the first time. The city of Ilea was founded by Ionian colonists from Phocia, just one generation before Parmenides was born. 
Flying from the Persian threat, half of Fosia's population set sail to the colony of Alalia, modern Alaria, about the year 545. Alilia itself had been founded just some years earlier, circa 565, by colonists from Phocia who lived from commerce and piracy. But soon after the arrival of the new colonists of Alilia, the Etrurians and Carthaginians forced the Phocians out of their city and south towards Regium. From there, they sailed again to the place where Aelia was about to be founded, sometime about the years 535 and 530. Regium, in turn, was the foundation of settlers from Chalcius, around 743 and 730 BC. Anaxagoras of Clatomenae reached fame among his contemporaries as a physical philosopher and astronomer. Although he conceived the world as formed of infinite primary elements, he maintained the existence of Anus, mind, as the universal governing force. Most likely, Anaxagoras spent some years at Athens where he was in the circles of some of the most notable intellectuals of the time, like Pericles and Euripides. Born around 490, Empedocles belonged to the aristocracy of Acragas, modern Acrigento, and probably was a priest too. He wrote one or maybe two books in verse on the nature of the cosmos. He proposed four elements as basic to all things created. Acragas was founded around 582 by colonists from nearby Gela. Gela itself was a Dorian colony. It was founded around 688-690 by settlers from the island of Rhodos. Zeno of Ilea was the beloved disciple of Parmenides and is still known for the ingenious paradoxes he devised to explain his teacher's profound ontological problems. Zeno of Ilea is not to be identified with the Stoic philosopher Zeno of Citium, born in 334 BC. Another disciple of Parmenides was Melissus from the Ionian island of Samos. Melissus was a commander of the fleet of his motherland during the Peloponnesian War. Leucippus, the founder of the atomistic school, was born probably in Miletus around the year 480 BC, although some have doubted that he even existed. He is credited with several writings on physics and cosmology, of which very little fragments survive. Leucippus shares in many ways the objectives and methods of the Milesians, but he founded his own school in Abdera around the years 440 and 430. It is likely that Leucippus resided at some point during his life in the city of Ilea, and some authors even believed he was born an Ilean. Abdera was a colony of Clatsomenae, founded around the year 654 BC. From Abdera came the brilliant sophist Protagoras. One of Plato's dialogues bears his name. Protagoras visited Athens in several occasions, and we know that he was teaching in the city sometime between the years 450 and 440 BC. Hippocrates of Chios was a mathematician, geometer, and astronomer born around the year 470 BC. This Hippocrates from the Ionian city of Chios is not to be confused with the famous physician of the same name born in the island of Kos some years later, around 460 BC. The island of Kos was inhabited first by the Carians and later colonized by Dorians in the 11th century BC. The important mathematician and astronomer Philolios of Croton was probably a member of the Pythagorean school. Philolius developed a cosmological theory in which the center of the universe was not the earth, but a central cosmic fire. It is only with Socrates that the great philosophical tradition of Athens begins. Although Socrates left no philosophical writings of his own, his intellectual penetration, magnetic personality, and moral integrity made him the center of a philosophical revolution that would change forever his native town, the whole of Greece, and the history of the Western philosophy.
the junior of Socrates, Democritus, was the most distinguished disciple of Leucippus and was probably born in Abdera. Democritus developed the atomistic theories of his teacher, and it is for this reason that in modern times he is sometimes considered the father of modern science. However, during his lifetime and after, he was not very well considered among the Platonic circles. The son of an Athenian father, an Athrathian mother, and Athenes, was a disciple of the sophist Gorgias and later of Socrates. He is one of the founders of the Cynic philosophy. The famous historian, philosopher, and commander Xenophon of Athens was a disciple of Socrates as well. Though not a profound thinker himself, he left for posterity vivid memories of his teacher and his circle of disciples in Athens. Plato presented his theories as if coming directly from the mouth of his beloved teacher Socrates, though in many aspects he developed the ideas he took from him in a very personal and innovative way. About the year 387, Plato founded the Academy, his own philosophical school. Plato's Academy lasted until the year 529 of our era, when it was closed by the emperor Diogenes of Sinope, best known as Diogenes the Cynic, was another forerunner of the Cynic philosophy and way of life. Sinope was a Milesian foundation. It was conquered by the Chimerians, and later it was again colonized by settlers sent from Ephesus in 632 BC. Aristotle, the most distinguished disciple of Plato, the tutor of Alexander the Great, and one of the most important philosophers, logicians, and biologists of the Western thought, was a noble man from the small town of Stagira, in Macedonia. When he was about 18 years old, Aristotle moved to the intellectual capital of Greece, Athens, to study philosophy. In the year 336, Aristotle founded his own school of philosophy, the Lyceum. It continued functioning until the sack of Athens by Sulla in the year 86 BC. Stagira was founded in 655 BC by colonizers from the Ionic island of Andros. Epicurus was born in the island of Samos, although his parents were both Athenians. When he was 18 years old, Epicurus returned to Athens to fulfill his military duties. He left Athens some time later and founded a school in Lampsacus. In the year 306, he made his definite comeback to Athens. Philosophy was born in Greece within, and sometimes in opposition to, the mythical narrations of gods and men that we know mainly through the epics of Homer and Hesiod. For the contemporary citizens of Heraclitus and Parmenides, the new philosophical theories were placed almost side by side with traditional wisdom. Hesiod was for them just another wise man or philosopher. The philosophical tradition prior to Socrates is sprinkled with the names of philosophers, mathematicians, astronomers, or just wise men who excelled among their fellow citizens for their intellectual contributions to their communities and today are little more than simple names. For instance, we know very little about Perigides of Cyrus, the author of A Cosmology in Prose. Another example of the many lacunae in our knowledge of this time is Hermotinus of Clatomenae, a half-legendary figure to whom it is attributed a theory of a generative principle similar to the ideas of Anaxagoras.